Welcome to the Stony End Workshop. Today I'm going to give you some explanation on harp maintenance and on sharpening lever installation and repairs. In this video we're going to explain what sharpening levers are, how they work, and how you can make them function on your harp. These instructions will be good for Stony End harps. In most cases, most of the instructions are usable on other brands of harps as well as Stony End harps. Uh, Sharpening levers are a key element in harps. Uh, on your regular harp, of course, you, you've got your C major scale, C, D, E, F, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Obviously, you're going to want to play music that has in other keys. So this problem has been solved with harps by the addition of what we call a sharpening lever. The sharpening levers have a distinction between the, the sharpening mechanism on a pedal harp which has a double action, it can be sharp or flat. On a harp, on a folk harp, or what we call a traditional harp, the sharpening lever can only raise the, the string one half step. Now this happens to be a red string, which means it's a C. So it's a C, and when we sharp the lever, we're pinching this at basically one fret uh, spacing, which brings it up to a C sharp. So when we install levers, the, uh, they'll be able to raise this string a half step. Now, originally, before the sharpening levers were invented, uh, blades were used. This would be a blade, and a blade would be mounted on a harp, and when it was turned, it would touch the string, basically as in the same function as a guitar fret. Uh, Robbie Robinson invented uh, what we call, of course, <coughs> Sharping, Robinson sharpening levers and this has been the key to the development of the folk harp world in the last uh, 40 years. Uh, they're still still used occasionally, um, not very often. You have to be a little concerned because there are really bad imitations of Robinson sharpening levers available so watch out for them. Uh, the, next, <clears throat> the next development was by a gentleman by the name of, of uh, Robert Bunker. He invented the Loveland levers, which are very nice levers. <clears throat> they solve most of the problems involved in using sharpening levers. A Loveland lever would be mounted in this position. If you look at our scale here, <clears throat> this, is a, this is a G. Okay. This is a G. So we'll, we'll put this lever right here. And there's your G sharp. So this lever is in the exact position that we want. It, it raises this G string from a G to a G sharp. We will mark this location, <clears throat> drill a hole, and install the lever. In this situation, we're installing truet levers, which was the next development on sharpening levers. Truet levers are very nice levers, very solid, very massive, very smooth operating and they will be installed in the same idea. This is an F. I'm gonna bring, if you focus on the, on the F, see this is a perfect F. Now we will put this lever here. It's a little bit too sharp. When this is a little too sharp, I will increase the length of that string a little bit and brings it up to a perfect F. In this case, now I will mark this location and uh, with a little point like that. Actually, I can do it. I'll drill holes. 
And then I'll just ins uh, install that lever with the tiny little screw here. In the last several years, we've started using a lot more of the Camac levers that are made in France. Camac makes a very solid, massive count, a lever that has, uh, that's very smooth operating and provides a really solid base for a clean note. Uh, Camacs are installed on this particular harp here and they work very well. There's uh, an issue that develops with Camac levers if you're trying to add them onto another harp is that the bridge pin height is very low on them. So in certain situations, the string can actually hit the wood. So that's an issue to be involved and uh, aware of. The, the most important thing we need to learn about sharpening levers is that the height of the bridge pin is critical to the functioning of the, har of the sharpening lever. Now this, this particular lever, um, this, this bridge pin right here is set at a certain height. Now this is a C, and this lever has to be mounted specifically so that that string will not buzz against any part of the lever, whether it's whatever brand of lever it is. Now the way we, we adjust that string height is because these bridge pins can be adjusted. <clears throat> Originally, bridge pins were like this. They were smooth and they could be uh, slid, hammered in or pulled out a little bit. Now we've gone to bridge pins that have tiny threads on them. They're like this. And they have a little socket head on the end so that we can take so we can take this, this bridge pin here and we can adjust that bridge pin up or down so that, it, so that that lever will function perfectly. We want to be able to raise that string enough so that it has a whole string diameter clearance between the open and closed position. So this, this particular sharpening lever would be a C. When we raise it, it's tight. So we've raised that string enough so that you could actually see a tiny gap. If you look across this string, you'll see a tiny gap of air. If the string is too low, like that, it'll buzz against the lever. If the string is too high, it'll buzz against this heart, this top of the lever. Uh, so the key, uh, if you have a harp and you have a problem with the string buzzing, you have to look very closely at the, at the uh, bridge pin and find out in what part of the bridge pin that that lever is buzzing on. If it's buzzing on the top of the bridge of the sharpening lever, you have to lower it. If it's buzzing at the top, at the bottom part, you'll have to raise the, the bridge pin up. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing that you have to be aware of as far as maintenance is whether this string is actually, this lever is actually raising the pitch the correct amount. If we, if we, if we, if this string is not giving you the correct amount, so if in the engaged position the, the string is too sharp, that means that the length of this piece segment has to be increased and, and that would mean that you'd have to loosen the screws and move the lever so that this string is longer. The other thing that can happen is uh, if that string is too sharp, is you may have to adjust the height of the bridge pin. So one of the two adjustments would have to be made to make that string uh, in the sharp position a uh, uh, perfect sharp. Uh, all Stony End harps come with a string chart. If you have a Stony End harp, you can download the string chart from, the, from our website, from the resources tab of our website. Uh, the issue to remember is that all of the strings are counted from the shortest small strings as number one down to the lowest string as number 29 or whatever it is. So uh, the red ones of course are going to be your C's and the blue ones are going to be your F's. Uh, but the next issue that we will frequently encounter harps is a pin that uh, will slip on. So there's various types of problems that you'll encounter on slipping pins. Uh, the most common type of harp tuning pin is a pin like this. You can see it has a slight taper to it. Now that pin is inserted tightly into the wood. 
but if it isn't tight enough, uh, there isn't enough friction there so that the harp pin will turn. If the pin is, is inserted into there, like, like that, and if it's not tight enough, it has to be tapped lightly, just light enough so that it starts to turn, and then when you put the tuning wrench on it, it will, enough friction will be involved so that this harp will not turn. So if you have a, a through pin like this and it slips, the, the, the solution is to hammer that pin in just a little bit tighter. You aren't gonna cause a problem because it should be that tight anyway. Uh, the other type of pin that frequently encountered, especially in the smaller pins, is what's called a zither pin. The, the, the zither pin, if you see, has, has, has tiny threads in it. And these tiny threads are screwed into the, into the wood. On a, on a zither pin, uh, one of the problems would be that uh, frequently when a string will break, a string is broken, somebody will put a new string on and screw that pin in again. What happens is the pin gets way too deep and then if you pull it out it may slip on there. Uh, if, it, if you can't keep a zither pin tight, usually the solution is to take it out and fill the hole full of super glue and let it dry overnight. And that will usually uh, stiffen the fibers up so that that tuning pin will, will tighten up. We use the, the zither pins on the smaller sized harps, particularly the Eves and the Brittany's. On this particular model, which is a Lorraine double, we've, we've had some custom made uh, uh, extra sized zither style pins that are not available anywhere else. Now these pins are heavy enough so that they can be used even on the big, long, heavy strings that have an enormous amount of tension. So these particular pins can be used where, uh, where ordinarily you would have to use a, a, a through pin. But that allows us to, to have these pins tuned on this side. When you get a zither pin that slips, um, you'll have to take it out and, uh, and uh, tighten up the hole. For those of you who are still with us, I've got some technical information that will be helpful for uh, any issues that you find in installing levers or doing maintenance. Uh, we use two sizes of through pins, a larger size and a smaller size. The larger size here uses a number five standard machinist tapered reamer. The smaller size uses a number four standard tapered reamer. Uh, they could be used to, uh, to fit these pins. Common issue with these, fitting them in like that and having them set too deep or set too shallow and the reamer is what will allow you to set that at the correct depth. Uh, <clears throat> we get into installing sharpening levers. Uh, there's some, some certain things that are, that are helpful to know. Um, the Loveland levers, when you're drilling this hole for Loveland levers, they will use a 3 32nd drill bit and then the tap. When you get into using the uh, Truett levers, it's a 5 64th drill bit and that uses a number 6 Torx size uh, tool to install that screw. So we use a 5 64th drill bit and a number 6 Torx. The Camax we run, in, we use the Camax levers, and on a Camax lever, we use, actually has the same size screw. It's a 564 screw, or drill bit for, for the Camax lever, and, but this uses a number eight size Torx uh, driver to install that lever. On the Loveland levers, we use this Bondis 764 ball end driver that fits onto the, uh, to the screw. And the advantage to this particular lever uh, tool is that this fits at an angle and it allows us to run this screw in at a slight angle because the ball end will allow that uh, tool to fit at a slight angle that it's necessary to fit into the lever. So these are really handy tools. They're five, six, uh, 764 Spondus ball end. The other tool that's used with Loveland levers is a standard quarter inch wrench which is used to adjust the correct tension on the, uh, on the bit here. Um, <clears throat> uh, one of the common things you run into with, uh, with them is to get 
a lever and to get the, the screw in the slightly the wrong position. As you do that, if you get a slight, uh, uh, if you're slightly off on your hole, it'll make that unpleasant ping sound. So what you have to do in that case is to uh, uh, fill that hole with some wooden toothpicks, ordinary wooden toothpicks. And if your hole is in the wrong location, put some glue, hammer in the toothpicks in there, let that dry, and then, uh, uh, and then re-drill the hole in the correct position. It's, uh, it's something that he, sooner or later, everyone that installs levers is gonna have that problem. Uh, <clears throat> we use adjustable bridge pins. The sizes for those are 5 64ths for the smaller and 7 seconds for the larger ones. Uh, we use many sizes of strings and they vary from the 025 to the 032, 036, that's the 025, 028, 032, 036, 040, 045, 050, and 055, and 060 sizes. The, uh, the wound strings we commonly use are made in by the Vermont Strings Company, and they're uh, specifically made to the exact length. A string that has a wrapping in it, the wrapping should end like this one, right just over the bridge pin. It's the correct size for that. Congratulations. Uh, you've gotten the levers installed and the harp is ready to play. At some point, the harp, as the harp ages, the soundboard will actually arch a little bit. And as the soundboard arches, the levers might not be in the correct intonation. At that point, you would have to do what's called regulating, which is to take and adjust the sharping levers or the bridge pins so that the levers will actually raise the correct pitch. Uh, commonly, after a year, you would expect to have to regulate a harp. And at that point, it'll probably uh, stay in, uh, in good regulation for the rest of its life. But uh, at least one uh, regulation period would be uh, commonly expected uh, for a harp.